What's up guys, welcome to Voicey here. This is your host, Captain Zack, and today's subreddit is r slash I don't work your lady with a little bonus from r slash today I fudged up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called Today I Fudged Up by Ignoring My Resting Heart Rate of 140 Beats Per Minute. Obligatory, this happened a few months ago. I am 26 years old and male. This incident occurred in July of this year and resulted in me being hospitalized for three days. Background In mid-June, I started a new job for the Civil Service UK. After giving up on a teacher training course a few weeks prior to being offered the job, However, the warning signs for what was about to happen started whilst I was doing my teacher training from August, September 2018 and onwards. Shortly after starting my teacher training, I became acutely aware that my heart was beating faster and harder than usual, even when I was completely sedentary or relaxed. This was particularly noticeable at night when I was trying to sleep, as I'd often be preoccupied with thinking about how fast it was beating and this would lead to me being unable to fall asleep. Around this time, it was holding steady at about 100 beats per minute. I'd frequently measure it just out of curiosity, but then I'd forget about it for a few days until I was having one of those nights where I was struggling to sleep. I'd generally notice my heart rates, but only be slightly baffled about how fast it was beating. I didn't think anything of it and put it down to just being generally unfit. For reference, I play football once a week and typically walk around for about 40 minutes a day. So, although I wasn't doing an ideal amount of exercise, I thought my level of exercise was adequate. I put my fast heart rate down to my lifestyle, the fact that I don't eat particularly healthily, and I also smoke and drink every other weekend. Fast forward a few months and the sleepless nights had really started to take its toll. I had missed 20 days of teacher training through sickness absence and was on the verge of being thrown off the course. This is around March, April 2019, and I still hadn't taken any measures to investigate my fast heart rate. In fact, by this point, it had become a running joke in my friend group to ask, how's the resting heart rate? Or, my heart rate whilst sprinting is essentially your resting heart rate, etc. Being quite a self-deprecating person, I was quite happy to go along with the joking, although internally I was now really starting to worry. In May 2019, I got offered a job I had applied for 12 months prior. I was on a waiting list. I took the opportunity to get the frick out of teacher training, which I despised, and took the job at the civil service. This is when things really started to become concerning. About four weeks into my new job, I started to feel nauseous on most days. I had also recently purchased a set of scales and noticed that over 12 months, I had dropped from 11 stone 5 pounds to 8 stone 11 pounds without any change in lifestyle. By now, my resting heart rate was 120 to 140 beats per minute at rest, no matter what. On maybe two or three days every week, whilst walking to work, I'd find myself feeling incredibly sick, and sometimes I would stop off to be sick before heading into the office, or being sick in the toilets at work. Eventually, I had a few days sickness absence off work and took the opportunity to visit my general practitioner. I had actually gone to see the general practitioner because of a bout of insomnia, not about my heart, but he measured my heart rate and blood pressure just as standard procedure. My general practitioner, visibly in shock, asks me how long my heart rate had been so high at rest. I said, oh, about a year, but I'm very unfit, you see. He immediately suggests I can either book to come back next week for a heart scan or go straight to A&E and have a heart scan there and he will call ahead. I followed my usual lifelong rule of no news is good news and said I'll have the scan next week. At which point, he insisted I go to A&D right now. I take his advice, I arrive at A&E and explain that my general practitioner should have rang ahead. He hadn't, so I went to sit down fully prepared to wait three to four hours to be seen by anyone. To my amazement, before I had even sat down, a nurse called me through to the triage area where she hooked me up to a heart monitor. My heart was now at 180 beats per minute. I get sent to recess and given an IV with a solution intended to reduce my heart rate. It did nothing. At this point, I was told that I wouldn't be able to leave the hospital until they had worked out what the problem was. So a nurse took my blood and the tests were carried out. By this point, it was around 9pm, so I was moved into a ward, hooked back up to an IV, and by 11pm, I was asleep. In the morning, a doctor approached me and interviewed me. One question that resonated with me was, 
Do you have any difficulty swallowing? Up until that point, it hadn't ever crossed my mind that yes, I do have difficulty swallowing. <laughs> After concluding his questioning and looking back at my blood tests, he explained that I had hyperthyroidism and that the level of thyroxin in my body was over 1,000 times the normal level, meaning my metabolism was in overdrive and my heart too. The enlarged thyroid gland itself was the cause behind the difficulty swallowing. They keep me in for another night and eventually my heart dips below 100 beats per minute for the first time in months. I get prescribed a cocktail of medication which I have to take for the foreseeable future, carbamazole and propranolol for those interested. And then they let me go home. I look up the symptoms for an overactive thyroid and I tick pretty much all of them. And I think, you complete and utter moron. How could I have missed this? Why did I leave it so long before going to a general practitioner, you coward? Etc, etc. It was at this point that my mom decided to tell me, oh yeah, that makes sense. It runs in the family. We all have it. Cheers for the heads up, mom. The present day. As I write this, I am back up to 11 stone, 7 pounds, and my heart is steady at 50 to 70 beats per minute. I'm reducing my medication steadily and gradually. I forgot what it actually feels like to feel well. Yeah, man, um, if your heart rate is that high when you're resting, go to a doctor immediately. I mean, there had been times where I had alarming symptoms that were indicative of a huge problem, but I never went to check it out because, I don't know, I figured nothing ever happens to me, and that mentality is <laughs> deadly. <laughs> but anyways, that is very alarming to have a resting heart rate of 140 beats per minute. Uh, I don't know, I don't know what else to say other than I'm glad the guy's okay, but jeez, that's insane. Also, this probably has very little relevance, but I read a long time ago that it's estimated that all animals, their lifetime consists of 1 billion beats of your heart. So it's basically saying our natural lifespan is however long it takes for your heart to beat 1 billion times. That's why mice die so quickly because their heart rates are really, really high. So this is probably a stupid thing to consider, and any one of you guys in the comments below that has a medical degree will probably think I'm stupid, but I wonder if his life was shortened because of that, because of his heart rate being so high for so long. Alright, this story's called Stir Fry Sauce. Hello everyone, long time lurker here. I was amazed when I came across this subreddit. Finally, I have a story to share that fits perfectly. Please forgive spelling and grammar. I have some neurological issues and can get a bit wonky. It's okay. This happened a good decade ago now, when I was about 20. But you know how some memories stand out so vividly? This is definitely one of those times. I was a newly graduated veterinary nurse working in a busy little small animal clinic based in a well-known horse racing town. On that particular day, we'd had a high volume of surgeries and I just spent a good six hours solid doing anesthetics. Hunched up and concentrating hard and was so very ready to stretch my legs and eat an overdue lunch. We finally wrap up the last surgery. All went well, no animals were harmed in the making of this story. I am very ready to devour calories. Now, usually, whenever I left the clinic, I would change my nurse's tunic for something more casual. But as we'd been busy and I was two hours past my usual lunchtime, I didn't bother to change. And, in fact, hadn't even de-accessorized. So, I had a full bottle green tunic and trousers, fob watch, name badge with job title, and to top it all off, a stethoscope round my neck. Full-on, knackered nurse chic. I was in a rush to get my coveted sandwich, damn it. Point is, everything about my look screamed medical worker. I decided to pop into the local Marks and Spencers and get a nice sandwich. Anyone from outside the UK, Marks and Spencers is a department store that is fairly fancy, not super duper posh, but not exactly an everyday shop either. This branch was a clothes store up front with a food section at back. Getting lunch from here was a special treat. So I get to Marks and Spencers, have picked myself a drool worthy sandwich, ham hock and chutney, <laughs> yum, and have decided, hell with it, I'ma get me a dessert too. In for a penny, in for a pound. I trotted to the fresh cake section and am salivating over cheesecakes and macaroons when along comes Karen. I know that's a cliche at this point, but seriously, this woman was the most Karen Karen to ever Karen. From the I need to speak to your manager haircut 
to the Audi car keys on the Kath Kidston key ring clutched in her bejeweled claws. Karen stops right next to me, stares at me with eyebrows raised, then sort of huff sighs through flared nostrils in my direction. I assume she wants something I'm standing in front of, so I just shuffle along a bit and keep contemplating cakes. Mmm, cake. Don't you dare walk away from me! Pardon? Where are the stir fry sauces? She clicks her fingers up near my face as she says this. Stir? Fry? Sauces? At this point, I didn't twig she thought I worked there, as I'm wearing a name badge with Vet Clinic on it and knew I was representing my workplace, so I try to be polite, rather than just scoff in her rude face. Mistake. Oh, I have no idea. Maybe on the end of the veg aisle? Like with the packaged salads and stuff? Alarming screeching begins. What do you mean you have no idea? This is ridiculous! You should know where all products are. How could you be so rude and stupid? The irony. Me, confused still, hungry, just want to eat my damn lunch. I don't know where your sauces are. I don't come in here much. Excuse me, and I start walking away. Karen puts her arm out, blocking my escape. I can't believe this, you rude child. They will hire anyone these days. This shop is supposed to have standards. I don't care if this isn't your apartment. You should know this shop layout is basic knowledge. Did you even listen during training? Who's your manager? All said in one enormous breath. Kinda impressive. Me? Bewildered? Still hungry? Really struggling to connect that she actually thinks I work there? I... don't work here. Gesturing with sandwich at uniform. Karen, with an even higher level of screeching, dogs back at the clinic lightly start howling in response, face alarmingly red. Don't get cocky with me! Tell me where the stir fry sauces are right now! You are going to be in so much trouble, young lady! You might even be fired for your cheek! So done at this point, stomach growling, sandwich calling. I don't work here. I'm a veterinary nurse. I'm buying my lunch here. Please move. Uh, Karen's gears start turning, eyes roaming nursey evidence. Ah, uh, oh, I should have known you from... Name of horse clinic, not the vets I work at. They always have silly little girls working there. Look at all the horse hair you're sprinkling around the place. They shouldn't have let you in. It's not sanitary. I'm telling the manager you'll be banned. FYI, my tunic was spotless as I'd been wearing scrubs over it all day. But sure, okay, Karen. Thank the lunch gods, Karen decided to then storm off. I assumed to find a manager to scream at for a few hours. I grabbed a custard tart, double pack, and you're damn right I ate them both, and purchased my lunch. I never saw Karen again, so for all I know, she's still there, shouting about rude stable girls who don't know where stir-fry sauces are. The sandwich was delightful. Okay, I know, we all agree the Karen was a ding-dingled word. But can I talk about sandwiches for a second? I am a huge believer that sandwiches are one of the best methods of eating food. I will take a good sandwich over any meal, ever. Okay, I'll take that back. Okay, so it's either sandwich, pie, or the halal guys. I'm really good at making good sandwiches and really good sauces for those sandwiches, so <laughs> yeah, I, I'm big on those. Also, let me say this, if you're near Manhattan, or you can go there, or if you're in Houston, I don't know where else they are, but please check out the Halal guys, they are so good. Get just, um, get a platter with rice, um, the gyro meats, I call it gyro, shoot me, um, and chicken with naan, no tomatoes, the tomatoes are so bad for some reason, and get some white sauce, the white sauce is so good, um, the red sauce is really spicy, so go easy on it if you can't handle it. I take two packs, that's because I'm badass. This story's called, I thought what happened to me was an anomaly, but this sub proves how commonplace this kind of stuff is. When I found this sub, I was amazed at how many people had similar experiences to what I had happened. I just thought it was a rare alignment of the planets that caused it, but now I see how certain people are ridiculous and entitled when it comes to retail workers and where they see them fit in the social hierarchy. Anyways, here's my contribution. About 10 years ago, I worked as a delivery driver for AutoZone. Worked my morning shift, did my deliveries and other BS, and headed home. Realized I was out of toilet paper, so I stopped by Target on the way to pick some up. Found the toilet paper aisle, and headed to get my brand. I'm picky. 
I was deciding between the biggest pack they had or just the four roll, doing the math and figuring out how much I had to spend that week. I noticed another customer had entered the aisle and was heading towards me, so I stepped forward assuming she'd pass behind me, and I went back to the big decision I had ahead of me. My concentration was broken a moment later, by the distinct clearing of a throat in that way that it's only made to get someone's attention and not in a very polite way. I never considered that she thought I was an employee and just thought I was in her way. I looked at the gal and smiled and said, excuse me, stepped even closer to make room assuming she thought I was in her way and went back to what I was doing. Well, are you going to help me or what? I was completely caught off guard. I was like, what in the heck is she asking me for help for? And I kind of looked around in that way you do just to make sure that you aren't misreading the situation. That's when I saw the Target employee in the red shirts and khaki pants pass the end of the aisle when it hit me. I'm wearing my red shirt with the name tag. I can understand the confusion now. I turned back to her and tried to laugh it off to save what I thought would be her embarrassment for mistaking me for a Target employee and tell her, sorry if my shirt confused you, but I don't work here. Thinking she'd be like, oh, silly me, you have a good day. And I'd be able to respond, no worries at all, you take care out there. But heck no, that couldn't be how it went down. She then proceeds to respond with, yes, you do. You just don't want to help me, with a noticeable edge in her voice and narrowing her eyes at me. At this point, I'm freaking gobsmacked asking myself if this is really happening. Because it just seems so absurd considering this was pre-Reddit for me and I'd never heard about something like this occurring to anyone else. I tell her, irritated but still not really urinated, just nonplussed. Sorry, but I work at AutoZone. She just kinda loses her temper now and says something to the effect of, I'm freaking lazy and she wants to know the name of my manager so she can let them know why their employee is lying to customers, refusing to help them. Then I uttered the line that made me laugh when I found the sub because of how true it was, and said with as much indignation and righteous fury I had. Scream warning. I don't work here, lady! You! She got ready to start in on me again, and I cut her off. Look, I've got black pants. They've got tan. I unclip my name tag and hold it out, shaking it at her. See? Freaking auto zone. Not target. Now go away. She starts winding up again to defend her idiocy, and by that point, I'm freaking done. So I grab the toilet paper, can't remember if I got the four pack or the big one, sorry, and I gave her a final F you, and walk away as she's squawking on behind me. Seems like she was trying to figure out which auto zone I worked at. I could only assume so she could come by and spread some of her unique dookie headery around there as well, and probably ask to speak to some type of manager or call corporate or any of the other unfortunate normal BS we've all become accustomed to on here. So yeah, that's my story with the reality of how weird people are in retail. I'd have called her a Karen here, but I know a couple of really great Karens, so I kinda avoid the term, but I can see why it has become so prevalent. I no longer work retail, and if the universe is kind, I never will again. But to all you retail workers getting ready for the nightmare of Black Friday and the ensuing holiday season, I wish you well, and I hope people genuinely treat you like people and appreciate you being there. I know I do. My man, let me tell you something. If you think that something that happened to you was just a one-off thing that just happened to you and is really rare, I can tell you right now, if it's dependent on someone being really, 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 really stupid, then it definitely happens all the time because people are always stupid. This story's called, Small Shop on an Industrial Block Would Often Be Mistaken for... Something Else. I used to work at a small machine shop on an industrial block. The addresses were all jumbled up and the block was poorly planned, but the majority of the businesses there didn't really deal with the general public, so it didn't really matter. Every now and then, we'd have someone knock on our door looking for a different business. No big deal. The block was really confusing. Two buildings behind us was one of those Asian massage parlors. One day, while it was just me and my boss at the shop, we got a knock on the door. He went to get it while I kept working. They exchanged a few words, then my boss turned from the door and shouted out, Hey, OP, we giving out palm careers today? We both laughed our asses off while watching this red-faced little man jog away from our building on the security cameras. We had a couple other seedy-looking folk come to our door, 
but most of them would scurry off without saying anything once they saw we had only machinery and dudes inside. You see, that's a funny story because <laughs> this dude got caught trying to solicit prostitution and then he ran away. <laughs> it's funny. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.